subject. What was the first idea? Where did it all begin? Uh, it's a, it's a it's a video game, and so the idea became began in a bar uh, in Paris. Um, David and I were really uh, unhappy about our. Uh, uh, employment status at the time. We worked in a, in a, in a bad company and we wanted to create a, a better one. So Omeridus was born as a studio that uh, well, that we envisioned as the studio we would want to work in um, mm. first. Uh, and we needed to make a game because that's what a video game studio do. And the game we decided on uh, was to tap into our experience and our um, taste. Uh, so we decided to make a tycoon. Uh, David has worked on City Skyline. He's worked mm. on uh, at a, a publisher after that, and uh, at Ubisoft, I I worked on uh, on management games. Uh, and so uh, we had this experience, and we love uh, tycoons. We've been playing them well since we were born, because we're <laughs> quite young still. And so um, so yeah, the, the old Bullfrog games have a, had a huge impact on us, uh, and we wanted to kind of uh, try and do something like this. Uh, we also know that it's it's a, a kind of game that is quite hard to make, uh, but we wanted to to have an experienced team to build an experienced team. So if you want to uh, really get experienced people, you need to give them a project that will motivate them and challenge yeah. them. Uh, so uh, you know, Tycoon uh, kind of checked all the marks, uh, and so we thought let's try and make a good uh, Tycoon concept. And uh, then after we started uh, thinking about different types. Of, of things we could uh, you, you, that would be fun to manage and we ended up on the casino uh, because mm. casino are very very dramatic places a lot of stuff ha happen uh, in casino um, and we from the get-go we thought we don't want to make a simulation game we want to make a game where uh, that's aspirational that people that we want to represent in a video game mm. uh, the, the the cultural pop cultural um, uh, vision that people have of casino. So when you are handling your casino and blooming business, you are handling the casino as you might see it in casino from Scorsese or from yeah. uh, Soderbergh with uh, all, I think, yeah, that's Soderbergh who did the Ocean's Eleven uh, movies. Um, all of those movies, you have this glimpse of what a casino is like, usually from the exterior or from, uh, from the interior with Scorsese, but usually a casino is a place you rob or <laughs> you try to, uh, yeah. to kind of sting. Uh, well, we wanted to put you in the in the shoes of uh, of the bad guys uh, because we think that's cathartic, and we also think it's the best way to really show people that uh, casinos are predatory places. Uh, they are they are social predators. Uh, they work by uh, making people uh, really uh, well. They work by through addiction, right? That's yeah. how they make money, and they and they also make money through uh, making you think that you have a higher chance of winning than you actually do. Uh, and we really wanted to uh, kind of um, tackle these issues, but we also wanted to provide a place that's interesting as a game and as a as a place to spend time in. So that's why we are going for the we're also going for the very laid laid back tycoon. We you don't have to have a, a PhD in mathematics to, to enjoy our games. Uh, I think what was you sort of talked about there that you kind of started by wanting to make the the casino game and you kind of wanted to make us the the, the bad guy so to speak, the casino. When I was playing the demo, one thing I was really surprised by in a really nice way was the the depth. So you, you can go in and change sort of like the betting amounts and the potential returns. And it's a really deep casino sort of tycoon if you want it to be. Was that was that early on in the, the sort of the process we wanted to make something that, that is that deep or can be that deep? So I think this is the holy grail of every designer. It's to make something that's uh, easy to uh, learn and hard to master. And and so we 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 wanted that. Uh, we want to aim for this. We want a game where if you just want to put down stuff, you can. And you're just going to enjoy having a, a nice looking casinos and funny clients. But if you really want to go and optimize everything, you should be able to. We want we want to give you the keys to the truck and you just enjoy yourself. Uh, but for that, we need to put a lot of metrics that might be. Um, uh, kind of frightening to new players, uh, but uh, it's our job to make those less frightening. And furthermore, that's how you get people to learn uh, about how things work. It's mm -hmm. by uh, you know uh, letting them, I think, uh, you know, walk into the pool uh, at their own pace. So yeah. at first they will see a lot of uh, uh, tick boxes and percentages. Ah, I don't know what all this, and then they will experiment and they will find by themselves. And I think that's the the best way to learn how things work, how systems work. Um, so there's definitely the aspect of having enough depth. 
that we are interesting on the long term, that were interesting to experienced players, but we also uh, managed to teach how casinos work uh, to players who might be more or less experienced in tycoon games. Yeah, and that's kind of something that, again, I thought really came out well in the demo, is when you start looking at what different clients want. And I was just wondering about how that sort of system came about. How did you decide kind of what kind of client types you're going to have? How did that system come together? So client types uh, are uh, a key feature because because we knew we wanted you to have to adapt uh, because doing something that you because you you just want to do it is fun uh, but uh, having a challenge uh, in a way that is purely positive where you are not going to get punished is uh, rare and uh, in video games usually uh, like if you don't jump the right way in Mario you die mm. but in Tycoon it's important for us to have a safe space uh, and so um, we want you to progress at your own pace you're building your own house of cards uh, and the system is going to throw balls at it to try and get it to uh, crumble yeah the idea is with client types um you get, you might get a negative feedback of client type saying, "I don't like it in your casino," but uh, this doesn't mean you will have to start again. It doesn't mean that you have to to destroy what you did. You just have to change what you're doing, and that's important for us because we want uh, the game to be a positive uh, experience for everybody. And so, if you get people who are not used to management games, uh, you really want them to have like aspirational goals. Like, uh, you want them to have an open sky and not an open pit. Yes, and that's why we have uh, client types because uh, someone comes in the casino and says, "Oh." Oh, this is just not for me. I'm just going to, you know, uh, circle the block and see if everything has changed. Anything has changed when I come back. And if it has, then they will get in. So uh, we we also wanted to have client types that are compatible. So if you if you have a casino where you absolutely don't want ticky stuff because you don't like ticky or Greek, uh, you don't have to put them uh, because you will find some clients that enjoy the, your casino as it is. Currently, we have three client types because in, in the level design that yeah. we have, in the level that we have currently in the demo, there are only three. But uh, further down the line, we want to have more and more and we really don't want them to be set in stone. So ideally, uh, so of course I'm touching wood here because this is video game making, so nothing's sure, but yeah. we we want uh, client types to be, uh, to be randomizable, if that's a word, where... When you start a new sandbox mode or a new a new game, you don't really know what clients are going to like. Hmm. But you know that if a mobster isn't happy, he's going to um, mug mug people uh, yeah. in your casino, and you don't want that. Uh, you also know that uh, tourists usually have deep pockets, things like that. You know, but uh, how you please tourists, how you please mobsters should always be a, a new challenge, meaning that a casino that you're going to build uh, the first time around or second time around is not going to be the same, even if you're trying to please the same uh, clients. So we really want to have this kind of uh, a build mentality around yeah. the casino. So either you are just building a casino because you like it that way, or you are building a casino to achieve a particular goal of rentability or uh, average revenue per client or whatever. At what point... Did you say this casino simulator is great, but they should be animals? What? Where did that come in? Um, so we have a wonderful art director. His name is uh, Pierre Marvey, and uh, so he came in. To the, he's the first uh, employee of the company. He came in. He's, he's an old friend of David, uh, and so we, when we started talking about the game, etc., he thought, ah, maybe we should have you know this kind of retro look. We wanted to really portray the, the rise of Las Vegas, so from mm. from like the fifth, the start of the fifties uh, to the um, to the seventies maybe the 60s and, and, and so the um, have this really particular look uh, and so our one of our main reference was art like Miami art deco in the 50s because we didn't want to go full Vegas yeah we knew that just with the colors just with the decor we were going to you know have this Vegas feel but we wanted to put a twist on it um, because we want people to like it's it's like putting fancy sneakers they might be really crazy looking but when you wear them and you're not looking, they're just still sneakers. And yes. so we want you to sometimes stop and just look at the wonderful sneakers you're wearing. So just look at the game and say, oh, it's nice looking. This is, it's surprising. Uh, and furthermore, uh, that's one of the key pillars of the, uh, the of the company. And I think of making anything that's interesting. If you make something that is not aimed at, uh, at someone in particular, you are making it for no one because a game mm. for everyone is a game for no one. But uh, we're not the only one of saying this in the, in the industry, but... We are doing it with the art style. If you take a look at the tycoon genre uh, right now, you have a lot of things that don't try to have an artistic direction because they want, they don't want to uh, frighten anyone. Uh, but the goal is not to frighten anyone particularly. We just want to have someone who is who is really into what we're doing. And that's if you want that, you need to have a strong artistic direction. 
plus I think the art direction does something for the theme as well. Uh, I mean, having animals uh, is, uh, <laughs> it's not just because we wanted animals. We, we, there is this deep tradition of uh, anthropomorphic animals uh, in culture, uh, you know, in most cultures, you, you have fables, uh, I think, uh, in, uh, in India, uh, who, which predate the, the Greek ones from Aesop uh, and, and the French ones from uh, La Fontaine, of course. Uh, and we, we wanted kind of uh, to, to put ourselves in under that umbrella of commentary through, um, you know, uh, animal stereotypes. And uh, the idea was not necessarily to do something cute, but if you are going to make something with animals uh, and colorful stuff, making it cute is a good way of showing something that could be too dark and actually have you think about it. You know, like, oh, uh, you know, this... Uh, this uh, mobster is actually uh, having a cartoon fight. Uh, this uh, like uh, um, hedgehog mobs mobster is having a fight with this uh, platypus uh, tourist. Uh, this does not uh, like register as violence or something that is uh, like uh, that I will have to process yeah. later on. I was say kind of when I was playing the the demo, um, I played it through a couple of times, and then I I found that the sort of the second or third time I, I was playing it, I found it much easier to change the games in my favor because i didn't feel as bad about sort of <laughs> scamming a platypus that kind but of felt it, it yeah. felt okay what's interesting is that right now you're scamming a platypus but next time you end up in a casino uh, by chance or by uh, uh, by bad luck actually uh, you you are going to think oh i scammed the platypus <laughs> but today i am the platypus and so uh, you, you gotta wonder uh, uh, you know if you want to be the platypus, <laughs> I think it's okay uh, because uh, video games are the best medium if you want to really tackle uh, systems. Yeah. If you want to understand how a system works, you gotta fiddle with it. Uh, and so uh, we are taking care of uh, making the system uh, fun and interesting, and then people can just have at it and and see. And but again, we are trying to not to create a simulation. Uh, we are still making a, a game and so it's yeah. about f having fun managing a casino and that's why our handle uh, like our tagline is uh, um, uh, handle the drama it's because yeah. we want you to come into the casino and we want you to handle everything that's happening but you have to know that uh, when you run a casino uh, stuff is going to happen but what's interesting is that you're going to have two sides of uh, of the experience of just the experience where you're learning about uh, handling casino and you know uh, making this big uh, profitable uh, enterprise and having more and more floors and more and more clients yeah. and you are scamming platypuses and you are handling the mob bosses and stuff like this and but those don't, uh, they, I mean, they are parallel, they, they intersect, but they are not uh, against one, in, one another. No. And I guess that's why when, when all of the, those vegetables go into your mind soup, uh, then it comes out with, uh, you know, proper, uh, uh, proper uh, takeaways. How did, how did you choose which animals you're going to have? So we, we, we went through multiple focus groups. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, so we, every time an employee comes in, uh, we ask them to like, uh, create a profile in the company presentation so that new employees can just learn a few things about everyone. Mm. Uh, and everybody has to choose an animal and that animal ends up in a list. And that list is the animals we have in game. We have like, um, a taxonometry of animals. So for, so that everything is readable currently. All the employees are birds, mm. and all of the um, all of the sorry, all of the other characters can be anything, but employees are birds, mm. and uh, it's just it helps because um, they don't look the same even from above because of the beak or whatever, and so uh, it helps with readability. Yeah. But we are still uh, fiddling with everything, and so we don't know if we are going to keep that until uh, the until we ship. Yeah. So uh, the APs are a bit different because we we they are not in this demo; they were in the first one. Uh, but we normally when we release, we're going to have a, like a half a dozen VIP characters that have different powers that you have to to whose needs you have to tailor even more. Okay. Uh, and and when they're happy, they give you huge bonuses, and if they're unhappy, they will just wreak havoc. And we have so the, currently how we chose uh, every single um, uh, VIP animal is through basically we have a list of emotions and of uh, like characteristics of that particular uh, animal and uh, of that particular VIP sorry and that's how we chose the animals. So for example, we have uh, we have a Athena Weizacker uh, who is uh, like this. Um, 
columnist for the local paper and like uh what she says is uh is basically what's what's going to happen so if, if she's really happy with your casino you are going to have more reputa good reputation mm -hmm. and stuff like this uh, and what's interesting is that we don't have um we we don't mention gender anywhere uh, in the game uh, and Athena Weizsacker is uh, what we would uh, think as a female name. A Athena is a, is a peacock, uh, but uh, she has like male, attri what, male attributes, uh, but she identifies as a woman. So, you know, no one is going to question that in the game. Uh, and why? Because we wanted to have this character, like this character fitted uh, a lot of um, the peacock uh, analogy, uh, but we wanted to have a recognizable character. And so, uh, you need if you are going to go for the peacock well the male peacock is the the one that everybody recognizes and so that's why we went with it and what's interesting with that is that uh, we can have like layered informations so if you might you will not notice that the first time you play but if you spend a bit of time looking at it then you might actually pick up a few things what we care about is putting every a lot of little deals and i think mm. it shows in the animations and in the, the models everywhere and was that a conscious choice then just going back to that about not putting genders in the game was that a yes conscious yes yes we realized it didn't bring anything to the game mm -hmm. so we just had this uh thing where it's uh, this is male this is a female and then we're like if this does not why? do anything why not care why care so we just scrapped it uh, and then which is a problem in french because we don't have neutral um but no um but uh, we re replaced it by something which has an impact, which is the, the astrological astrological signs. So we have Leos, we have Tauruses, etc., and they all have like different personalities and yeah. different stats, and uh, they might not like the same things just because of that. Um, because we wanted to have uh, uh, a lot of uh, different things happen on the casino floor and to have ways to differentiate uh, clients. Even generic clients aren't different from one another. They don't have the same statistics. They are not going to have the same quirks mm. and they're not going to have the same uh, astrological sign. And so all of this will, uh, you know, get, um, it will all come into play when they make their decisions. Yeah. So that it means that everything is different all the time. Ask, is your favorite animal in the game yet? Uh, it is. It is. Uh, th it's the the privilege of uh, being the creative director and uh, and being the one of the co-founders. Um, my so my favorite uh, my animal is um, it's the seagull. It's one of the croupiers, I think. Uh, yes. Dealers. Um, and uh, it's it's a seagull from my um, my grandpa's uh, region in uh, in France, in Brittany. And they are really small seagulls that run on the on the beach uh, when they are all together. And I just liked it, and so I said, oh. "Hey, why not have that?" And it's it's a bird, so it can be an employee. I think obviously the the demo is coming out during uh, Games Made in France, the Games Made in France yes. festival. And I kind of wanted to get your your take on it. It seems to me that the games industry in France is really strong at the moment. I was just looking through the, the games that are in the, the games made in France, and there's things like Deathloop, Young Souls, obviously Yourselves, Defend the Rook. There seems to be a real kind of boom at the moment or in the last couple of years in the French games industry. Would you, would you say that's... Because that's kind of an outsider's perspective. Mm -hmm. Would you say that... Is that what people feel in France? Is, would you say the games industry's... I, I think I think the the there is there are multiple factors at play. Uh, so um, it's not really well known. But for, for example, France were, was really um, like the opposite of eager with internet. We had our own internet, which was called the Minitel, mm. and was something that was government made, etc. But we France has a, a really strong history of like technology through uh, government uh, plans. So the government said we need something to reveal to like we need a French internet, and so they made this. But what happened is that they just, uh, you know, funneled a lot of engineers uh, in in this, in like telecoms uh, mm. stuff, and so a lot of those uh, ended up uh, being really active into the video game uh, development and even like uh, free software stuff like this. And I think it made a really good ecosystem for the first video game studio. So, for example, you have the guy Another World uh, came out a long time ago and was already you know at the uh, at the forefront of video mm. games at the time. Uh, but I think what's interesting now is that you are seeing the video game industry in France after multiple crackdowns. So uh, it kind of fell through with the after the DS years mm. because everybody was making DS games but uh, couldn't sell them. And then Ubisoft kind of stayed strong and extended, extended, extended. And now the thing is you have a lot of students uh, who study video game making in France and they okay. can all find most of them. I 
okay, let's say 50% of them at least find a job. And then uh, because there are enough companies that are uh, that can uh, onboard them, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is, because of this, uh, you have a lot of people who know how to make games and we have a very, um, I'm going to, uh, let's say, a favorable environment to yeah. cre creating companies. For example, um, David and I, uh, we... We didn't spend one euro to create the company because we have a, a very strong unemployment uh, like uh, insurance system in France. Okay. And so both David and I had uh, for two years, so 24 months of, uh, of salary that was insured by the state. And so when we left our other uh, job, we could just start uh, working on the game. And actually, I started getting paid by the company in May and David uh, is starting to get he's starting getting paid this year. So those two costs means that you have two people uh, who would be, uh, because uh, we are some of the most expensive people in the company, uh, we would be some of the most expensive salaries. Well, we could put those salaries in on someone else. And so we could, from the get-go, uh, find funding really easily because we could really, you know, with a lot of peace of mind, start uh, thinking about making the company. Yeah. So I think the the environment is very fa favorable. Uh, we have a lot of experienced people uh, everywhere in France uh, that we can hire. And so I think we are just uh, reaping the profits of, a, a, let's say, a, a positive way of looking at uh, video games uh, from the 90s. Yeah. Uh, when, when are you looking at maybe launching? Do you have an idea? Do you have a window in mind? When are you thinking? Or is it just when it's ready? Yeah. I, yeah. If, so the... Making 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 video games is giving money to people in a room with computers. As long as we have <laughs> money, we'll keep on making the game. Uh, and so um, currently, we don't have a clear plan on when we are going to launch. Uh, we have you know ideas. Uh, we don't think we want to launch now uh, no. because the game is just we don't have enough to give to people. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be about balancing out the value proposition, so how much people can spend time in the game and how, yeah. how many different stuff there is, and our just our ability to survive. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be both. Uh, so when it's ready and and it is the is the right way of looking at it. We we can't really talk about it now. But what I can say is that we don't aim we don't aim to to ship uh, and forget. The idea is to release in early access. And you know you can just come into our Discord and tell us what you thought about the demo, and we literally chat with uh, with people on the Discord saying, "Oh, you didn't like this? Okay, no problem. We're going to take a look at it." The last demo, not the one that's currently on, but the demo of that was uh, that was released for the Steam Next Fest. Yeah, we had square uh, zones, so you couldn't edit the size of the zones, etc. And no one liked that, and so we said, "Okay, we're going to scrap it and make it better," and we did. I think the more people we can get to play the game and tell us what they thought the better game we will make so first of all we'll release in early access and then yeah. you know uh, we'll see how long it takes to bring the game to a, a satisfying level of uh, quality and then we will release it outside of early access i mean that, well my pitch i'm going to pitch an animal oh, uh, the honey badger the honey badger is my favorite animal Actually, we have an artwork of a, a VIP, uh, uh, one of the VIPs as a, a honey badger, but we we actually we changed it because no! the problem, yeah, uh, the problem is that the honey badger <laughs> is uh, is reckless, territorial, and uh, unyielding. I think. Yes, uh, and the thing is, we we wanted a, a calmer animal, uh, like the the sheriff for the town. I, I think it's, it's going to be a, a lizard or a crocodile now because we want to have this kind of mischievous uh, ambience, and the the badger didn't do it. I, I really like the artwork; it was really nice. So the badger might get in, uh, but uh, just not a not as the Ziggy sheriff. Uh, thanks very much, Paul. It's been right, it's been a pleasure. Brilliant. Uh,